coming up on today's show. Elon Musk throws Wall Street into a frenzy by announcing on Twitter that he's considering making Tesla a privately owned company again. Audi shows off the power boost mode of its upcoming e-tron SUV. And Porsche confirms that the 2019 Taycan will produce more than 600 horsepower. These stories and more coming next. Hi there, folks. Well, August is normally considered a slow month in the car world, but this week has been anything but. Thanks to Tesla CEO Elon Musk, who nonchalantly announced on Twitter on Tuesday lunchtime that he was considering making Tesla private at a price of 420 US dollars per share, stating that he had funding at that price. Musk's tweet started a chain reaction that resulted in a temporary halt to Tesla trading, as well as a jump in share price that put Tesla stock close to $390 each. In a letter to employees, Musk said that he wished Tesla to go private to enable the company to focus more on the company's future without the distraction of quarterly earnings reports or share price fluctuations. It's also known that he absolutely hates Wall Street shorts betting against the company, something that would also disappear if the company went private. However, Musk's announcement on Twitter could land him in hot water with the SEC as it wishes to validate some of the statements he made about the privatization to ensure that they were factually correct. As you might expect, I made a more in-depth video on the news midweek and I'll link to that in the show notes below. Continuing its push towards the launch of the 2019 Audi e-tron, Audi has been letting select members of the media test the car's powertrain by descending down the famous Pikes Peak hill climb course in Colorado. A first for the auto industry, Audi's e-tron SUV has a completely drive-by-wire braking system, and it's more efficient than regenerative braking systems on competing vehicles. That's something that Audi says will help it manage a WLTP test cycle range of 248.5 miles 400 kilometers per charge. Interestingly too, there's a promised boost mode that will allow the e-tron SUV to output up to 300 kilowatts from its dual motor or wheel drive system for a total of eight seconds, perfect for overtaking or quick starts. 0 to 100 kph, 0 to 62 miles per hour is said to take less than six seconds. Nikola Motors, one of the many zero emission truck manufacturers hoping to go head to head against Tesla and its upcoming Tesla Semi in the Class 8 trucking world, has announced that it's already secured $100 million in the month of August, funds that will certainly help it continue its drive towards full production. The funding is part of a wider $200 million C round of funding that the company is predicting will be oversubscribed. With orders from some pretty big names in the trucking world, including an 800 unit order from Anheuser-Busch, Nikola Motors is hopeful its future will be very bright indeed. Claiming $11 billion in pre-order reservations, it's going to be very interesting to see Nikola Motors and Tesla go head to head in this marketplace. I honestly think it's big enough for both of them. Last week, you may have remembered me talking about a promised third generation upgrade to Tesla's autopilot system that was designed as a drop-in replacement for existing second generation autopilot hardware vehicles. Well, this week, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has confirmed that very upgrade will be offered as a free hardware upgrade for all Model S, Model X and Model 3 customers who've already paid for both enhanced autopilot and full self-driving capability packages. That means you've already laid out at least $8,000, the combined price of both packages at Ording, on making your car drive itself in the future. Free in this case is subjective. German startup Sono has been quietly working away on its Scion electric car for some time, but this week it finally announced that it's secured enough online funding to begin pre-production testing. What makes the Sono Scion special is the way it's built. There's a traditional electric motor and battery pack capable of around 155 miles, 185 kilometers of range per charge. But the car's body is also covered with solar cells, enabling it to recoup up to 18 miles of range per day simply from sitting outside in the sun. It doesn't stop there either. There's a very neat air filtration system that uses moss rather than disposable panels, further increasing the car's eco credentials. As for the price when it goes on sale next year, just 16,000 euro or about 18,200 US dollars. Expect to hear more from this car very soon. The fatal accident earlier this year between an Uber self-driving prototype and a pedestrian might not have happened had the car been using its original onboard safety systems. 
That's the verdict from the US Insurance Institute of Highway Safety, which issued a report on the incident midweek. Criticizing Uber for turning off the collision avoidance technology found as standard in the Volvo XC90 SUV that had been retrofitted with Uber's autonomous driving system, the group chief's research officer said the developers of self-driving technology need to ensure they have the best crash avoidance systems in place before letting their cars go on the public road. In a separate report this week, the IIHS heavily criticized current semi-autonomous driving systems available in current production vehicles stating that they're not ready for prime time and reiterating that they should never be given full control of your car at any point. If you live in the UK, you may have enjoyed being able to claim back 40 pence per mile in mileage allowance from your employer or your taxes for work-related trips that you've been able to make in your own electric car. I remember doing that myself for many years, even asking several times to make sure that it was okay to claim back 40 pence per mile when my car only cost me a fraction of that to drive. Well, now the tax system has caught up with Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs Service, HMRC, implementing a new 4 pence per mile advisory fuel rate from September 1st. This means that you'll no longer be able to reap the benefits of driving an electric car and, interestingly, as some of you have noted this week, removes many of the financial benefits of driving an electric car for work. As a disclaimer, I'm not a tax advisor, nor do I claim to be one, so if you think this affects you, check with your tax advisor first, eh? President Trump continued his war on sanity this week by trying to blame the California wildfires on state Governor Jerry Brown and by trying to reinterpret immigration law to deny citizenship or permanent resident status to even legal immigrants. And yes, that does include me. But this week, the California Air Resource Board fought back and gave him the two-finger salute over the proposed EPA fuel economy rollbacks published last week. Rather than lie down and take the poorly written logic arguing why cafe standards should be rolled back, I made a video about it this week, CARB has published its own proposed regulation amendments which would implement the higher gas mileage requirements set out by the previous administration, even if federal standards are frozen. This fight is only just beginning, and if you're angry at me for what I just said about the president, bite me, because it's about time we stand up for logic and common sense, not hatred and idiocy carefully veiled as First Amendment rights. It's official. General Motors is nearing the same 200,000 car US federal tax credit program for electric vehicles limit that Tesla recently passed, meaning that you'll be soon not able to claim 7,500 US dollars off your taxes if you buy a brand new Chevrolet Volt or Chevrolet Bolt EV. While the 200,000th car limit hasn't yet been reached, it's likely we'll see that milestone pass before the end of this year, triggering the slow ramp down from the feds, which will mean that cars purchased in the first half of next year will likely be able to claim $2,700 or so off their taxes, while those buying in the second half of next year will be able to claim about half of that. That is, of course, unless the proposed change to US federal tax code that extends the tax credit scheme is passed given how anti-electric car the legislature appears right now, don't hold your breath. With so many new partnerships and investments in the last six months or so, Virgin Hyperloop One has announced that it's going to be building a brand new research facility in Spain worth an estimated 500 million US dollars. While there won't be a track there, Virgin Hyperloop One says the facility will be used to develop, test and certify components of its mass transit system, with the goal of having the centre up and running by 2020. And given the first Hyperloop systems are promised sometime in the next 10 years or so, the company has a lot on its plate between now and then to ensure its systems are completely safe and ready for public travel. To date, those wanting to transport hydrogen fuel for use in hydrogen fuel cell vehicles have either had to transport it in gaseous form or in liquid form. Both transportation methods carry their own risks because hydrogen is highly flammable. This week, however, the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Council in Australia published details of a new method it's developed for transporting and storing hydrogen. By developing a special system that can undo the Haber-Bosch process, which turns hydrogen into ammonia, the researchers say they can now successfully turn ammonia back into hydrogen. Since ammonia is more energy dense and is much safer to transport, this allows for cheaper and safer transportation of fuel. Then, when at the filling station, this new technique, which uses a newly developed membrane, removes nitrogen from the ammonia, resulting in hydrogen gas. 
Like its sibling company Audi, Porsche is continuing its push towards production for its upcoming Taycan electric sedan. And late last week, it released some more specifications for its first all-electric car. While it still hasn't detailed the battery pack capacity yet, Porsche says we'll see a range of over 500 kilometers, that's 310 miles per charge, a sub 3.5 second sprint time from standstill, and a power output of more than 440 kilowatts, or 600 horsepower. It also confirms that rapid charging from its own 800 volt rapid charging stations will take less than 15 minutes. Sadly, everything else, including price, has yet to be released. Jaguar Land Rover may have been feeling a lot happier about electric vehicles of late and has confirmed that every future Land Rover vehicle, all of which are due a refresh in the next six years, will either get a plug-in hybrid or all-electric drivetrain option. But this week it also unveiled the price of its 2019 Range Rover P400e in the US. At a starting price of $96,145, it's not cheap and effectively places a luxury SUV well above the entry-level Tesla Model X in the marketplace. With a range of just 31 miles in electric mode, it's not going to compete very strongly. But that said, if you really need a luxury off-roader that can be beaten up off-road, unlike Bjorn Nyland's Model X, maybe it's an option. Me? I'm going to wait for an all-electric Defender, thanks. Free trials are dangerous things. You get something for free and the company offering it then hopes that while it's free, you'll get so used to it that you'll be happy to pay for that service moving forwards. Well, that's what I assume is the logic behind Tesla's latest push to encourage people to upgrade to autopilot, pushed to customers' cars who don't have autopilot already. The free 14-day trial gives unlimited enhanced autopilot operation, after which customers will be invited to upgrade their autopilot as a cost, of course. At six grand, however, it's not going to be like adding extra channels to your TV subscription or adding extra minutes to your cell phone package now, is it? And finally, we started today's show with news of a company wanting to transition from public to private. And so it seems right to finish with one going the other way, specifically Canadian firm Electra Mechanica. Known for its solo EV and Tofino Roadster, the company has just filed its IPO, offering 2.3 million shares in order to help it raise 10 million US dollars to further production goals. While it is now delivering cars to customers in Canada, the firm wishes to increase its production to 75,000 units by 2020. Good luck to the company, and here's to a bright future. And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe, and support us if you can using one of the three links below, and give us some social media buzz if you're so inclined. Thanks for joining me, and don't forget to keep pushing to be better, smarter, and kinder. Keep evolving.